in line with expectations, by the way. So it's not a surprise at all that uh, the MPC decided to keep the NPR at 12% uh, plus or minus 200 basis points. Now, of course, the CBN governor also said this was due to inflationary pressures. In fact, he mentioned that the CBN still still believes that inflation will pick up 14% in the, in the third quarter of 2012. Now, with me to discuss this, let's cross to Samir Gadio, uh, Emerging Markets Analyst with Stanbic IBTC. How are you doing, Samir? What do you think about this decision? Well, I think it's in line with uh, the consensus view. You know, most of the economists and the, the market as a whole actually believe that the, the policy rate will be, would be uh, left unchanged. And uh, I think the main reason is that inflation is still going up. Um, not so much because you have uh, monthly infl inflationary pressures, but it's more because of the uh, shift to a higher base in January which is causing a transitory shock. So we're probably going to have um, an increase in inflation to 14.5% in July, August, and then it will start declining. So in this context, I mean, it made it a little bit difficult for the central bank to start cutting rates now because the real rates of return, so the inflation-adjusted rates of return, will decline in coming months. Mm. Now, looking at some of the key rates, some of them, of course, remained unchanged. We saw standard deposit rates is still at 10%, standard lending rates still at 12%. Of course, the CRR cash reserve ratio rates still at 8%. Now, these rates, re these rates did not change at all. What was this? Were you expecting him to make some change uh, in these rates? Well, you know, you, you have to take into account that the, the way the central bank operates is basically um, in cycles, if I can uh, use this term. Uh, between uh, September 2010 and November and, and October 2011, there was a sharp um, and continued increase in policy rates. Then uh, we entered the cycle of rate stability. So this is the fourth time the central bank has kept rates unchanged. Uh, it's likely to continue for some time, but I think overall this, there will be a cut at some point because you cannot keep uh, the prime lending rate at 25% on average in the banking system. It's just not sustainable. And if you pay attention to uh, the tone of the MPC statement. It was much more dovish this time. So the central bank governor referred to slowing global economic growth as well as uh, a decline in economic growth in Nigeria. And that's probably an indication that um, at some stage this year, the, the central bank will start very gradually to, to cut policy rates. Mm. Now, Samir, of course, not, this, was not a, this decision was not a surprise at all. What are some of the key points that came out of this uh, MPC uh, decision for you? Um, I think the, the key point was that uh, monetary policy has limits. Uh, I think the central bank governor was very clear on that. Uh, you need some um, enhanced structural transformation in Nigeria to address some of the shortcomings that uh, uh, we face every day. So the lack of power, uh, delayed foreign investment in, in the oil and gas industry because of uh, the PIB bill, which has been uh, in parliament for, for years. Um, same on the... Um, uh, agree reforms that have started to be implemented. Um, and I think another one to add actually is the, the actual and effective launch of the sovereign wealth fund. Because yes, foreign reserves are rising, but uh, if there is no codified framework to actually save the oil proceeds, mm. then uh, you will end up in a situation where the oil price falls and Nigeria has no uh, tangible fiscal savings. Well, That's Samir, a very dangerous situation. Samir, I, I actually want to talk about the real GDP numbers. Uh, we are in Q1 2012. They're predicted to drop to 6.5%. Now, this is what CBN governor, the CBN governor said from 7.45% in 2011. Do you think that warrants a, a reduction of the monetary policy rate? Um, I, I mean, well, first of all, in the first quarter of uh, almost every year, uh, GDP growth is usually lower. I mean, if you look at 2011, it was the same situation, I think, in 2010 as well. So it's, it's a cyclical effect, but that said, 6.1% is below the average recorded um, in, in Q1 in recent years. And I think the, the second caveat here is that uh, apparently the, the, the decline is because of uh, a drop in agric outputs. So it's mostly exogenous because, you know, you have to take into account that uh, apparently the harvest wasn't as good as expected and so on. Uh, but, but yet, I, I mean, overall, I think that uh, a cut in the policy rate would probably, uh, to some extent, boost uh, economic activity. So maybe not so much across all the sectors of um, gross domestic product, but at least in terms of uh, private sector lending. Because, again, you know, if you have... Uh, your prime lending rate at 25, 24 percent. I mean, how do you expect um, the non-tier one segment of the of the market to access credit? It's become virtually impossible. 
But Samir, I'm curious. I mean, what tone did you think? Uh, what tone do you think came out sort of out of this announcement? What do you think the tone was coming out of this announcement? Uh, are they biased towards uh, increasing or decreasing of the NPR, or do you think they're going to keep keep keeping it stable, sort of? I think uh, overall. I mean, obviously, it's neutral, but uh, there is a dovish bias. I mean, it's probably the most dovish and easing buys that we've heard for quite some time from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, I think, you know, the CBN has always had this argument that if global growth um, was to slow significantly, then they will probably cut interest rates. And what we're seeing right now across the globe is that uh, clearly you have a slowdown uh, in economic growth uh, in well, definitively in, in Europe, which is going to face recession this year, uh, but as well as in China. And so uh, we're probably in the situation where the central bank uh, will have the right arguments to, to reduce the NPR at some point. Now, I'd like to talk about the Naira, Samir. Now, we know that the Naira hasn't been performing so well. In fact, it's been losing value on the interbank market. We saw the Naira to the dollar go from 157.7 to 158.8. Yeah. Now, how do you think this decision is going to affect uh, any change in the, in the currency? Well, you see, that's the other risk because obviously you want to ease to support economic activity, but you want to also be careful uh, in the way you decline, uh, in the way you, you decrease policy rates because uh, you don't want to, to, to create further pressure on the exchange rate. Now, what we saw last week was that uh, there was um, a sell-off in uh, treasury bills because foreigners, at least some foreign accounts, um, took profit. And to some extent, you know, this was uh, a mini flight to safety because of what's happening in the Eurozone. So in such an environment, if... Um, there was a sharp cut in interest rates today and T-bill yields were to fall, let's say, to 10% or so, uh, then there would be no incentive for foreign investors to actually bid for treasury bills. But even in Nigeria, um, that will actually add to negative pressures on the exchange rate. So I think, you know, you have to balance the two, growth and exchange rate sustainability, because if you have an exchange rate shock, then the economy is also going to be negatively affected at the end of the day. Mm, well, thank you so much, Samir, for giving us your take on that decision. Like we said earlier, no surprise at all. The NPR was maintained at 12%, uh, plus or minus 200 basis points.